The volcanic crater complex at Mount Gambier is near the western end of the string of eruptive centres which spread across Victoria. Most of these centres are included in what is now called the Kanawinka Geopark. The whole volcanic region has about 400 vents and other volcanic features representing events of the past few million years. Mount Gambier is called a nested Ma volcano because it's comprised of four or more closely spaced explosive craters named Blue Lake, Leg of Mutton, Valley Lake and Browns. As this cutaway diagram shows, the volcano at Mount Gambier started fairly quietly about 30,000 years ago with a few rumbles and a series of minor explosive eruptions that spread a mantle of ash a metre thick over the landscape. This was followed by quiet outpourings of basalt lava that erupted from a crack or fissure and flowed out over an area of a few hectares to a thickness of up to 10 or 15 metres. After the thin ash and basalt were formed, a thunderous explosion followed when a larger body of molten magma rose as high as the water-saturated limestone and vaporised the groundwater to superheated steam. Probably from an extended open crater which this produced, a series of crater-forming explosions occurred that resulted in the valley and the Browns Lakes, as well as various minor craters from time to time. Another nuclear-scale explosion blasted out the crater called the Leg of Mutton Lake. Finally, a gigantic H-bomb-like blast excavated the 150-metre-deep Blue Lake crater and blew away most of the surrounding layers of ash and debris that had built up around the Leg of Mutton crater. The centre of the Blue Lake crater had collapsed downwards after the explosion and eventually water flowed back in from the porous limestone cavities. It's the microcrystals of lime that form in the warm surface water in spring that result in the lake turning blue each year in summer. Valley and Browns craters were the scenes of late-stage volcanic activity. Many of these features can be seen from the lookouts at Potter's Point at the northwest end of the complex. The view to the east here also shows the early basalt layer at Nurse's Landing on the opposite side of Valley Lake and several small scoria and ash cones in the valley floor. At a high level to the west is the Sugarloaf, another small scoria cone on the northern rim of a small, late-stage, high-level lava lake. This must have been a spectacular lava fountain with clods of molten basalt flung high into the air only to fall back to the crater rim as lava bombs to solidify into hardened lumps resembling cowpats or loaves of bread. This fountain spewed its lava into a high-level molten lake, which at times must have cascaded as red-hot lava over the cliff into Browns Lake below. Some of the evidence for the enormous power of the explosions like that which excavated the Blue Lake crater is to be seen in the car park adjacent to the tunnel to the viewing point over the Blue Lake. Here are some shots of the debris deposited from material falling back to the crater edge after the explosions and they can be compared to the smaller grain size of the ash and debris in the Crout Street South road cutting. We're about a kilometre from the margin of the Blue Lake crater and we get nice layering representing the pulses of the last eruption. In detail, they show a gradation from coarse to fine with some very small fragments of basalt included that are blasted out of the crater wall. There are also these chunks of soft sediment, some of which are deformed, showing that they were moist or wet at the time and they're scattered throughout the deposit, indicating the force of the eruption so far away. How long ago did all this occur? More accurate results are coming forward constantly, yet we can approximate a time about 25 to 30,000 years ago for the major eruptive explosions, with space between some events of several hundred years. Years by the thousands are hard for us to imagine, but to help us, here are some pictures of historic periods. 
stepping backwards through time to cave paintings of 25,000 years ago. This was also the time in the last ice age when people could walk from the mainland to Tasmania. Further eruptions may occur in the limestone coast region in the coming centuries, but not at Mount Gambia. This is still considered to be an active volcanic region extending up as far as Robe. So all these events would have been witnessed by an amazed gallery of indigenous people whose descendants now enjoy a dreamtime story of Cratebull and his giant ovens, which were extinguished by the rising waters. One can easily picture the Aboriginals awed by the force of the explosions, yet fascinated by the nighttime spectacle of the fire fountains being driven to engrave the events for posterity in the depths of the sinkholes and caves. Who knows, but that many of the engravings of about this age, that is, dated around 25,000 years ago in nearby caves, might be a detailed record of the terrifying eruptions. Subsequent generations would have re-scribed the record in the limestone as part of their ritual memory of the past. <laughs> 